Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Trace video, and today we're going to be playing Superbike 22. So we've got Ryan Vickers on board the Pedicini Kawasaki, just like he did in Most this year as a wildcard covering in for Leon Haslam. Now, it isn't exactly Ryan Vickers, but we've kind of done it in a little way. I mean, if we use our imagination, sure, why can't it be Ryan Vickers on board the Kawasaki? So, big thank you to Sergio23 for creating the helmet. It's pretty much as close as possible, but he did reach the layer limit, and of course doing some really awkward tweaks and changes with the helmet would just probably not make much of a difference, but in the long run, would probably make it that much perfect. But it's very, very close regardless, so big thanks to Sergio for making that. I did the custom number, which is the most bog-standard number 77 you've ever seen, and I just changed the name of the rider to Ryan Vickers, and I had a lot of fun with this, and thinking about what the possibilities are in the future with riders who come in as a wild card or riders that are just used to be on these bikes and maybe moved on. So, for example, like Chaz Davis or even some of the BMW riders like, hint, hint, Sergio23, Tommy Sykes. Get me a Tommy Sykes helmet, please, and a number as well, and I can put him on the BMW M1000 Double R. Now, if you are looking for a custom helmet and you're on PC, definitely reach out to Sergio23 in the Discord server. He's got a bit of time off at the minute, so definitely use his time wisely and get him to make you a personal number, a helmet, or even a rider sticker. The man's brilliant, so definitely jump into the Discord server with the description down below and give him a bit of a shout. So, anyway, moving on from that, we're going to be doing some free practice here in Most with, quote-unquote, Ryan Vickers on board the Kawasaki. Now, I love doing this, and this has been my favourite part of Superbike 22 so far. I'm still getting used to this game, very much like the rest of us are. I'm also learning manual gears, and I've also been changing the setups a little bit to try and understand the bikes a little bit better. Now, this is new. This is new for me. Usually I just jump on Ride 4 or MotoGP, and I just smash it, and then that's it. I don't think about it again. We do a race, we win the race, and we move on. This time, I'm actually in the middle of the pack, and... The riders, the AI riders that is, at 120% difficulty, are actually giving me quite a rough time, which is not a negative. It's a good thing, to be honest with you, because I've always been on MotoGP and Ride 4 and reached that certain plateau and not improved. A couple of tenths here and there, but not actually getting another level. Now, I think World Superbike 22 and learning the manual gears, learning the bikes, as I've mentioned, is going to probably push me a little bit further beyond than where I was, and I'm really excited about that more than anything, to be honest with you, because it means that A, the content's going to be fun and exciting because the AI is going to be pushing me. It's going to be exciting for me as well because I'm not holding back to make it interesting. I'm going to be going full throttle. So I'm pretty much excited for this, and that is why I'm jumping into free practice here with Ryan Vickers in Most to learn the track, learn the bike, and also push myself against the hardest difficulty in the game. So if we are 1.3 seconds now, down from top rack Razgatioglu, then so be it. We won't always be 1.3 seconds, we'll push and we'll push and we'll get there in the end, but yeah, that's the, that's the reason I'm doing a FP1 anyway, that was a long-winded conversation, but I just wanted to stress why I'm enjoying Superbike 22 so much, because I know a few of you seem to be very much on the fence with this game, and I understand because the bugs and the few issues, but I still ultimately really enjoy it. And this is the one that's really pushed me to another level. I did find MotoGP 22 took a lot of getting used to, same as MotoGP 21, but once you get that feeling and then you understand the, phys uh, the physics, you understand the basics, you can have a great time. And I'm also really excited about actually using setups, changing suspension, changing transmission. It's not something I've ever bothered with. Maybe a little bit on Ride 4 to change the transmission, but I've never bothered with the suspension settings. I always found that nothing happened and it was just merely a placebo effect that just hid the fact that you were getting better at the game because you were spending more time with it. Still not convinced when it came to Ride 4, but <laughs> for this game and for MotoGP it probably does make a large difference. But I mean, I have spoken to the devs about it in the past saying, does it even make a difference? And they were horrified. They were like, well, obviously it does. So yeah, here's, here's the chance for me to learn. But how are you guys getting on with the game as well? Let me know in the comment section down below a few things. Let me know how you're getting on with the game and if you're enjoying it or not. And also let me know who you want to see next in Superbike 22. I've got a quite a lot of requests already to cover certain rides and certain tracks, which I will try and fit in as soon as possible. Probably a lot of them are already done. It's just a case of that you've got to wait for the upload because I schedule a lot of things in advance, you see. 
So there's already videos done that are scheduled way in advance for uh, maybe your request might take a little bit longer because of it being hidden behind other content that's already done, if that makes any sense. But anyway, enough rambling for now. If you enjoyed the little ramble there, be sure to hit the subscribe button anyway. But uh, getting back to business, we are 1.3 seconds down to the world champion in first position, which is top rack, Razgatioglu, of course. And we've just found ourselves behind Scott Redding here. It's going to try and pick up a little bit of slipstream, but I also just want to focus on improving the lines here in Moss. It's not a track I've got to grips with just yet. I do feel like I'm getting there. But there's a few corners that I think I do need to have a look a little bit closely and say, okay, maybe reduce the speed into this corner, maybe downshift at this point and just learn the track in, its, in itself, really. But I've got to be honest with you, I love this circuit. I think Most is absolutely brilliant. Watching it on the television when I was watching the excellent rides in, uh, in Most, of course, this year and last year, brilliant, brilliant track from the outside perspective. And now playing this in this game, it's a lot to be excited about. I really do like this track. It's got pretty much everything I enjoy. Quite a bit of undulation here and there. Tight corners, short corners, fast corners, even corners that go on forever. Brilliant. Really, really enjoyed this track. But for now, we have improved the lap time. We're up to 19th place, just ahead of teammate Leon Haslam, 48 thousandth of a second. Of course, Haslam will be in the, the same game because we cannot remove a rider to add your own personal rider. But into the right-hand side here now for turn five, breaking quite firmly for the left-hand side. And for the first time, we are actually within a tenth of a second into the first sector. Pretty positive start, if I do say so myself. So all four lap times, or excuse me, yes, all four lap times, because the first one was just a basic lap time I did to get the, uh, the, the video idea going. I started brewing it in my mind and thought, tell you what, let's, let's make some content. So four tenths of a second, we are quicker into turn 13, which is the start or end of the second sector. We lost a massive amount of time there. Six tenths of a second we lost to top rack there. Of course, the top rack uh, Yamaha style is going to be pretty good around that sector of track and not so much for me yet on the Kawasaki. But bringing into the right-hand side for turn 17, very tight apex there. Good, good angle for the right-hander. And now for the left-hand side, we are down by a second. May or may not be losing time here to Philip Ertl and Kota Nazane who are just battling it out in this free practice session as we all go through Oliver Koenig for the year first time in a uh, Grand Prix session. But now to the right hand side for turn 21. We're going to pick up some big slipstream here from both riders. In fact, never mind about the slipstream, we're just going to blast through them and we do improve the lap time up into 15th, just 9 tenths of a second behind. Top rack, Razgatioglu. So put firm on the brakes as... Jesus! That was a bit aggressive if I do say so myself. Nazane wanted through and Philip Ertl just pops on through as well, so I don't even know if it's worthwhile competing with these guys right now, because I'm trying to improve the lap time as we give Philip Ertl a whack up the uh, the old wazoo there, as that was a bit much. But for now, I am not sure. Maybe we should probably hang out in the way for a little while and try and get some free track. I wasn't expecting Ertl and Nazane to be that aggressive in a free practice session with the, uh, the rookie of World Superbike, of course. But I tell you what, we will conclude this particular lap and let's try and wait for Scott Redding to get through and then we'll start charging on through and hopefully improve our lap time. I do very much enjoy this track and I'm beginning to feel confident, so why not give it a try before we conclude the rest of this video. So into turn 15 then, a little bit wide. I'm going to try and slowly bring on the power, but I'm a little bit concerned that we have lost a bit of temperature in that front brake. In Superbike 22, I'm really noticing that the temperature of both the tyres and the brakes are really important for good braking stability. So we could be struggling here, but maybe going into turn one in a moment, I'm going to try and warm up the brakes here, and then maybe try and warm them up into the first corner. But we can only see what we can do. But for the last lap of today, I'm going to try my damnedest to get a good lap in. So here we go then, coming out of the final corner. But we do have very heavily worn tyres, so don't think this is going to be my actual best of the best. I'm doing what I can on these very worn tyres. So breaking firm into turn one. Nice and tight apex there for the first corner. And the same can be said for the second corner. Lifted the anti-wheelie up earlier just to try and make sure that we don't have a massive wheelie coming out of turn three. But now into turn four, hanging on to the outside of the motorcycle there. And we now start to break up into the first sector by 57 thousandth of a second. Ryan Vickers, take a bow. That is a red sector for you, my friend. So breaking firm now into turn 10 as we keep it in 
nice and tight. Some of their right-handers, we bring on the power. Pretty solid stuff so far. Ryan Vickers is going to launch it to the left-hand side. Of course, we know it's me, but hey-ho. As we now go firm on the break for the right-hand side for 13. We did temporarily have a bit of green there up in the top right corner of the screen, but it does look like we aren't going to improve very much. The tyres are quite worn. The brakes don't feel particularly peachy right now, so <laughs> we might be conceding a simple 15th place for this one. And I'll tell you what, I'm not mad at that. We've got free practice two, we've got free practice three, and of course, plenty of time to improve. But going into the final sector now, we are down by three tenths of a second, pretty firm on the brakes, using a little bit of rear brake to slow us down as well. It's going to be pretty close, actually. We could still potentially improve as we go really tight to the apex of the 21st and final corner of Most. Bring on the power, it doesn't look like it's going to be, but I'll tell you what, I still enjoyed that nonetheless. So guys, big thank you for watching the video, I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know in the comments section down below, and of course let me know what you want to see next. So guys, like, comment and subscribe, thanks for watching, and ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.